she is she's one of us in Christ Jesus and she said can I just come and talk to my brothers and sisters in the Lord about the book that I wrote which is um, from the view of a preacher's kid and she's here to promote her book so I just want us to hear her and also to support her I'm saying this because as the body we must support each other and that's what I believe as the body of Christ we need to support one another and if we as the body don't support her who else will support her because she is one with us and let's just give it up for Abigail as she's coming to the front praise the Lord I just can't speak it. 
I can't speak it to save my life, hallelujah. So allow me to, to continue in English. I am the daughter of the late pastor. I told me in Moses Munyai and Louisa Munyai. Um, they were the pastors of a church by the name of the Citadel Christian Church, hallelujah. Amen. In Ruitrikat. Um, growing up as a preacher's kid, you don't have a choice but to serve God. You, you are born into the system. You are born into this kind of an environment. You know the scriptures, you know the songs, you know the rhythm, you know the pattern, you know the times, you know the language, you know the jargon. You know everything except for Christ himself. I knew it all, I knew how to say it, I knew how to sing it, I knew how to play it, I knew how to dance it, I knew how to look like I was walking the talk, but I didn't know Christ, hallelujah. If you wanna talk about having a child out of wedlock, I've been there. If you wanna talk about losing both of your parents at a young age, I've been there. If you wanna talk about being angry at God, I've been there. If you wanna talk about rebellion, I've been there. Whatever you want to talk about, God took me through it. If you want to talk about being homeless, I've been there. If you want to talk about starving, I've been there. If you want to talk about whatever you want to talk about, I've been there. And I was angry at God because at such a young age, I lost my parents. At such a young age, I, I, I had to go through life alone. I had to bear the guilt, the shame, the judgment. Because you as a community, you inflict so much pressure on us as the pastor's children. You want us to be perfect. We are not perfect. And so I was angry. Imagine a young teenager without leadership, without guidance. We are only two siblings, my brother and I. And when my parents passed away, it was just the two of us left. Now you can imagine what happens in such a scenario. There are no relatives close by. There is nobody. People will talk. They'll say, no, we'll be there for you. But nobody was there. So what happens? You are left at the mercy of the world. <laughs> no leadership, no guidance. There's nobody to tell you to come home. But by the mercy and the special grace of God, here I am today standing before you, holding evidence that God lives. Holding evidence that the prayers of my parents did not fall to the ground. You see, parents, when you are praying, your prayers cover your children past your life cycle. When you are praying, your prayers carry you further than you can ever understand. That is why prayer is so underrated. When the word of God says pray without ceasing, there is a reason. There will be a time where you will not be able to open a word or utter anything. But your prayers will continue to carry you. Amen. Today, I understand why I had to go through everything. Today, I understand why my life had to be so difficult. Even today, I still get phone calls with people amazed that I am still alive. Because as per the difficulties I have been through, I should have been dead. But mercy said no. He said, I want to use you in my kingdom. Not just to counsel other children. Not just to be a motivational speaker. But to be a minister of my word. That everywhere you go, tell them about me. Tell them that I am real and I exist. Not as the Christ that your father had introduced you to, but as the Christ that I am to you personally. Because those two are not the same. It is one thing to come to church because of someone else. And because it's my house, my rules, you go. And when you do the choice to get up and to bow and to say, Abba, Father, I submit to you. People have asked me, who can read your book? You're talking about it's life from the view of a preacher's kid, yeah, but who can read it? Who is it for? And my book is none, it's nothing like anything you've ever seen. It's deliberately seven chapters 
For those who walk in the spirit, you know what the number of seven represents. Amen. Completeness. Amen. It's seven chapters, seven different books, seven editions. And in each one, you will find the story of life. And when I say life, I leave no stone unturned. From both the view of a person who knows God from a distance and who, who doesn't even really know what it is to be a Christian to somebody who walks with God every single day. And you get to see the difference between life from both of these angles because it's not the same. I started writing this book in 2006 so you can imagine how long I've been writing. And you can imagine the maturity and understanding and growth that you must go through as you are reading each and every chapter. At first, I thought, I'm just a writer. I didn't think I'd ever publish a book. So I just wrote sort of to um, express myself, you know. I was angry at God. Um, I'll give you a good example. One of the ladies, she was giving a testimony. She spoke about how she said to God she was tired because she had been praying and God didn't answer. <laughs> you pray, praying doesn't guarantee the answer that you want. It guarantee, there's an answer, it's just not the answer you want. And it's not at the time that you want it. So I prayed for my dad when he was in hospital and my prayer was a little bit <laughs> more sentences than was because I said, God, my father is a pastor, he's a principal, he's the, uh, you know, he's the pillar of a community. He can't die now because it's not just about me now, it's about everybody. If he goes, then I don't know what's going to happen. And he died. Then I became furious because the recipe says, you take faith, you add prayer, you will get. <laughs> I didn't get. So I was very angry at God. So you can imagine the mindset of someone writing from an angry point of view. Where I say maybe this God doesn't even exist. Has anyone seen him? No. <laughs> Not physically anyways. But I grow as I begin to understand him. Hallelujah. There's a lot that I can say. But the biggest thing that I feel is, is what God uses me for. Is I have learned more than anything. That when God begins to speak to us as his children. It's like an outside voice. It's like somebody else talking to you, right? We know about this when we read in the book of um, Samuel. It sounds like an outside voice. But as you grow and you become more and more one with God, His voice is in you. You, you don't have to hear it from anyone else. It's deposited directly into your spirit. And that is the one thing that I have seen God doing. Women of God, I have seen God do things in my life that I cannot put into words. I speak on the phone with somebody and a demon starts to manifest. Those are things that you don't get to buy. You don't get to be taught. It's something that God places in your life, but you have to go through the process. There is no shortcut. You have to cry the tears. You have to, you have to burn. You have to, you have to be sharpened like a pencil. It's painful and you give up every day. But at the end, the product that you get is more refined than anything. For those who want to know, where can you get this book? It was a struggle. <laughs> a real struggle. Because first, I tried to sell it myself. That didn't go too well, because nobody knows me. But God has done something for me in this past month that I am still blown away. This book is now available internationally, worldwide. You can get yourself a copy no matter where you are. In the UK, in the USA, no matter where you are, you can get yourself a copy. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it on Barnes & Noble, you can get it on Take A Lot. You choose how you want to get it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And of course, it extends further than just the book. It is a ministry, I'm a walking ministry. And usually on a normal day, 
Sundays I minister live. God has blessed me with a large following on all my social media. Um, I have two um, YouTube channels where we are spreading the word of God. We have partnered with, pa with pastors all over the world. God has graced me so much. You know, I'm so humbled. I work and I walk with pastors from everywhere, Malawi, Nigeria, everywhere, the UK, by the mercy and the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, it's not about the lady that's standing in front of you. It's about the God that wants people to be reminded that his blood can never lose its power. It's about the God that wants people to remember that every word that is written in the Bible actually once happened and it can happen again. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. His blood still holds power. He's still able to do the impossible. We had the testimony about sight being restored. We had the testimony about someone being medically dead but brought back to life. It is because the power that is in the name of Jesus has been underrated for a long time and people have begun to become comfortable in their situations. They no longer trust God actively. They trust Him with their words, but with their actual being, they're still limited and they're still limiting Him. But God wants to move like never before. God wants to touch people like never before. God wants a mighty move of change so that people can know that He is still God, that He is the same, and He can still do it. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Praise the name of the living God. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. I see some of you have begun to lose faith. You are saying, Lord, you had promised, but now it's already December. Are you still going to do it? There's only a few weeks left. God says, don't limit me. I am able to do. You don't know my time. You don't know my plan. You don't know my reasoning. But nothing is impossible with this God. Don't you dare lose faith in him. Don't you dare lose faith. He will do it. In fact, he is already doing it. Trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in him. Trust him. Not just with your word. Trust this God. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust Him with everything that is within you. Yes. Trust Him. He is faithful. Hallelujah. We thank you. I thank you so much for this opportunity, yes. woman of God. Yes. May you forever be blessed. Thank you.